SpaceX's Starship program made 2024 the most fantastic year for space exploration. This year, we witnessed the largest and most powerful rocket ever built successfully launch, followed by its booster returning to the launch site to be caught by the chopstick arms. A historic first in human achievement. While the world celebrated Elon Musk's vision, we must not overlook the woman behind the scenes, Gwyn Shotwell. Her adept leadership has nurtured and developed the Starship project for over a decade, while showcasing remarkable diplomatic skills in navigating tensions with federal agencies like the FAA. At SpaceX, respect for Shotwell runs so deep that many longtime employees say, we work for Gwyn, not Elon. Join us as we give full praise to SpaceX's president and chief operating officer in today's episode. Anyway, thank you for helping us reach 88,000 subscribers. Our next goal is 100,000, and we need your support to get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We appreciate your help. Thank you. As 2024 wraps up, SpaceX Starship achieved new and significant milestones, marking a year of remarkable progress and operational success. This year, Starship conducted four test flights, double that of 2023. Each test flight marks a leap forward toward SpaceX's final goal of Mars colonization. The historical third test flight on March 14 witnessed the Starship mega rocket reach orbital speed for the first time. More interestingly, the launch occurred on the 22nd anniversary of SpaceX's founding in 2002. Neither the Starship vehicle nor its Super Heavy booster survived all the way through to their intended splashdown. But SpaceX officials said the test flight achieved several of its key goals during the flight. It includes reaching its planned orbit and achieving its first ever entry into space. It's safe to say that it progressed further than it did on any previous test. During its first two test flights last year, Starship exploded before making it to orbit, around 4 and 12 minutes after launch, respectively. Flight 3 also witnessed for the first time Starship's propellant transfer demonstration in space. Given that thousands of pounds of propellant were transferred between internal tanks, this marks an important mark for future moon missions run by NASA's Artemis program and even longer missions into space. Although both components ended up failing during re-entry, the valuable data from the flight gives SpaceX a solid and confident start to its fourth flight. During the June 6 test flight, both booster and ship made them all the way to a soft landing in the ocean, a huge leap compared to Flight 3. This success paved the way for the unprecedented feat in the following flight. In my opinion, Flight 5 on October 13 is truly the most groundbreaking milestone of SpaceX's entire 2024. The company nailed to return Starship's Super Heavy directly to its launch mount, catching it with the chopstick arms of the launch tower in a bold and unprecedented maneuver. For many people, that is a day for the engineering history books. Clearly, the booster catch was not the only highlight for Flight 5. In addition to the booster catch, the mission also sent the Starship upper stage into space and returned it for a planned splashdown in the Indian Ocean approximately 65 minutes post-launch. This dual-objective flight demonstrates SpaceX's commitment to refining its technology and enhancing its capabilities for future missions, including potential crewed flights to the Moon and Mars, under NASA's Artemis program. Another interesting tidbit, just before Flight 5, the FAA authorized SpaceX for Flight 6. This fast movement of the FAA perhaps is attributed to SpaceX's tireless efforts to force the agency's bureaucracy to work much more efficiently. Starship's sixth test flight is set for November 19th, just 36 days after the fifth test flight. The mission planned for the second attempt to catch Booster, but due to the safety issues, that nail-biting catch attempt was called off. The Booster then successfully did splash down as it was, and Starship's upper stage continued its journey and completed its task excellently. It finished one of the important tasks, igniting one of its Raptor engines while in space for the first time 
that had been canceled in Flight 3. The vehicle also performed an amazing splashdown in the Indian Ocean as planned, capping off a smooth test. Faced with the growing progress of the Starship project, SpaceX has determined to take a huge leap in 2025, increase the frequency of rocket launches by 25 times. That requires adding more pads in addition to the operating pad. Stacking the second launch tower in Starbase is basically completed. The chopstick and ship quick disconnect arm were about to be installed when I made this report. However, more work is needed before Starships can start lifting off from the new pad. For example, the pad's launch mount has not yet been done. As per Elon Musk's April presentation, there will be two additional launch towers at Cape Canaveral. In fact, SpaceX is progressing with rebuilding a Starship launch pad at LC-39A as part of its plan to expand the Roberts Road facility. If everything goes smoothly, the first Cape launch tower and launch system will be operational around the middle of next year. Synchronizing the two launch towers in Texas and the two in Florida would benefit SpaceX's orbital refueling test campaign in 2025 and Artemis 3 in mid-2027. The company will need to launch at least 15 starships for Artemis 3's lunar landing, which will largely involve multiple launches to refuel in Earth orbit before flying to the moon. Such a massive launch volume would require adequate launch infrastructure. SpaceX's heavy investment in the Starship project manifests its long-term vision. SpaceX's president, Gwynne Shotwell, argued that Starship will be even more valuable to SpaceX in the long run. Ultimately, I think Starship will be the thing that takes us over the top as one of the most valuable companies. We can't even envision what Starship is going to do to humanity and humans' lives. And I think that will be the most valuable part of SpaceX. That is based on the belief that the fully reusable rocket, with a payload capacity to low Earth orbit that could exceed 100 metric tons, will change everything about spaceflight, and not just with lower launch costs. Starship is so big that the concept of how we put things in space, how people will travel in space, is totally different," she added. It's safe to say that the features of the Starship rocket align perfectly with Elon Musk's original vision of a vehicle to transport people to Mars in the future. Starship is designed as a fully reusable spacecraft, capable of refueling in orbit and utilizes methalox propellant, methane and liquid oxygen which is not only efficient for deep space missions, but can also be produced on Mars itself. This innovative design is crucial for establishing a sustainable human presence on the Red Planet. However, these ambitious concepts were once mere ideas on paper. Gwynne Shotwell has been instrumental in bringing Musk's vision to life. Her leadership has transformed these theoretical features into a robust reality driving the development of Starship into what it is today. As President and Chief Operating Officer, Gwynne Shotwell has been instrumental in overseeing daily operations at SpaceX, ensuring that the company meets its ambitious goals. Her adept management of complex projects and maintenance of operational stability have been crucial during periods of rapid growth and innovation. This dynamic allows Elon Musk to focus on his other ventures and political aspirations. While Musk's depth pocket is a good background behind SpaceX, the company's development would not have reached its current heights without significant government support through crucial contracts and projects. Shotwell's strategic acumen has played a pivotal role in securing these partnerships, enabling SpaceX to thrive. Shotwell has played a key role in securing contracts with NASA and the U.S. military, which have provided essential funding and support for the Starship program. Her diplomatic skills have enabled effective collaboration between SpaceX and governmental agencies, despite differing operational approaches. Her idea is simply to focus more on the rich customer segment and find a way to sell her product to them. One of the most potential customers here is NASA with an endless budget funded by the U.S. government. In addition, NASA's programs also have been hitting many troubles and delay and over-expenditure caused by its outdated space launch system. 
so choosing a supplier with quality and low-cost products is the first priority of the U.S. Space Agency. By her wisdom, Shotwell has successfully convinced NASA many times to sign multi-billion commercial contracts with SpaceX since 2016, including carrying cargo and crew to the International Space Station and eventually to the moon. But no one can forget, or shouldn't forget, that with its presence in the list of NASA's partners, SpaceX's reputation has and is continuing to rise. Nothing is better than a junior in the space industry who takes the chance to practice in national projects. Amazingly, in each role it joined, SpaceX came out on top and gave NASA peace of mind. Shotwell's good diplomatic skills with the government further enhanced her position in negotiations with federal agencies, particularly the FAA. Her voice also played a key role in shortening the time between Starship flights, especially amid tensions as the FAA delayed launching licenses. For example, the Flight 6 schedule was made just 36 days after Flight 5, a record-breaking turnaround for Starship. This pace is 3.5 times faster than the gap between Flights 4 and 5, an achievement unmatched by any organization in aerospace history. Shotwell's reputation has earned her praise from key figures, including NASA former Administrator Bill Nelson, who commended her leadership. Elon has a president that he lets run the company, and her name is Gwyn Shotwell, Nelson remarked. I hugged her with a smile on my face because I know she is running that thing. She's running SpaceX, he added. Shotwell's strategic vision is also shown in building profitable business lines around technology. SpaceX already has in order to support longer-term projects. It's called residual capability. Under her time, SpaceX, instead of just focusing on rockets, started to extend its business range. Take for example, we've all seen that SpaceX used to launch satellites for other companies, and Shotwell later realized a larger opportunity, a self-created satellite. And by spreading it around the world, the company could build a sustainable business on Earth that might be needed on Mars. However, one of many issues on the satellite market is the high price caused by the expensive cost per launch of a rocket, whereas the advantage of SpaceX is the type of low-cost rocket with the most power and largest payload capability. So, why don't we use those rockets to launch as many satellites as possible to save money and time? Well, thanks to Shotwell, Starlink now has a large coverage global with more than 4 million subscribers. This cash cow is projected to generate $6.6 .6 billion in hardware and subscription revenue in 2024, contributing a huge chunk of revenue to the company and paying for the Starship development. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.